Hey, it's Paul from Electric Scooter Guide, the channel that scientifically tests more electric scooters than anyone else. But today I'm not testing a scooter at all. Today we're going shopping. You know, the main problem with buying an electric scooter is there's nowhere to test ride them. I mean, you can't even go just like stand on one and find out if the handlebars are too tall or too low. Unless you live in Miami, San Francisco, or New York, then you're in luck because Fluid Free Ride has retail locations in all three places. And today we're gonna go check out Fluid Free Ride San Francisco. We're gonna see what they have in stock, see what kind of service they do, check out any accessories they have on hand, and see if we can find out, you know, how do San Francisco riders use their scooters the most? Let's go inside. All right, well, this is Greg. Hey guys, how's it going? And Greg gets around a lot, so you can run into him in the New York, Miami, or San Francisco stores. And uh, Greg's gonna show us you know, what they've got in stock, tell us about what kind of service they do, uh, any accessories they've got on hand, and uh, let's go have a look. Yeah, Paul, happy to do it. So yeah, this is the, uh, this is the back part of our shop. Um, and you can see, first and foremost, we have our uh, customer repairs here, which is uh, a really good service that we offer at pretty much all the main locations that we have, and you can actually ship them in here as well. Uh, and then you can see next to me, actually, we have some more inventory as well. Some stuff we just got in and some other things that have been here for a minute. But we keep uh, the stores pretty well stocked with a variety of options. And so I think one of the things people are going to be the most excited about, the most interested in that you can't do anywhere else but a retail store is test rides. And so let me ask you about how, how does that work? What scooters do you have uh, and how do test rides work? Yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, we do a great effort to try to make sure that we have uh, all the scooters in our lineup from our website on the showroom ready to uh, test ride at any given time. Um, pretty much the only thing we need when you come in is you sign a waiver, uh, bring your ID and a credit card, and we'll uh, give you some information about the local area, where to ride, and uh, how to operate the scooter as well. So probably answer a lot of the questions that you have from uh, seeing the product online but not being able to physically touch it. Do the folks go out uh, on their own or do you go with them? How does it usually work? We can, yeah. It depends on what a particular person wants. Uh, some people like to just go ride and go see the city. Uh -huh. uh, other people want to, uh, you know, have that kind of accompaniment and uh, have us go with them and show them, you know, the different things or even switch scooters sometimes. So we'll go on a, a double test ride oh, and okay. then you can basically compare and contrast two scooters at once yeah, yeah. oh that's a great idea i hadn't mm -hmm. thought about going back to back so yeah you get to check out a scooter see how it feels but really you know go back to back with two different scooters that's that's a great idea is there like a group of scooters around here that you yeah, use for test yeah. rides oh, let's, let's have a look let's go back yeah. to the show yeah let's check it out yeah so uh pretty much you can see here all of our lineup here represented <laughs> oh, uh, which is pretty cool and everything from our, the biggest and the baddest the nami wow. the, the max um down to the middle of the range and even to our commuter scooters uh, we have them laid out so we can easily demonstrate all their capabilities and their physical size and everything to our customers. Wow. Yeah. This is fantastic. It's like it's literally like the entire Fluid website all in one spot. We've got the Namis, we've got the Wolf King, we've got the, the Wolf uh, Warrior X, we've got Klima, Phantom, yep. Mantis, another Mantis, the Jubal, we've got the Vista, Wide Wheel Pro, the Fluid Mosquito, the super lightweight one, uh, we've got the Fluid City and the Fluid Horizon. They've got literally like pretty much everything on the site right here. Yeah, and that's the uh, the main idea with our shops is we want to have the best representation possible for an otherwise unusual circumstance for when you're shopping online uh, that you don't get to physically see the yeah. product. We wanted to have the, exactly as you said, the, the manifestation of our website uh, here in person. And, and then you know, like, even if somebody didn't have the time to actually go out and ride one, just getting to put hands on one and kind of see, you know, how the, like this has narrow bars, which I kind of like, um, but somebody might not. And yeah. so like, you know, just getting to stand on things and, and feel them firsthand, like, and one next to the other is pretty cool and something you just can't replicate online. And so I'll, I can't tell you the countless amount of times people have come and they have a conception of like, okay, I want this uh, particular scooter or they see it and they're like, oh, that's absolutely not going to work for my use, but yeah. that one might or another might. And the other key thing I hadn't really thought about until just now is the weight too. Exactly, like yeah. this one in particular, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that scooters are heavy. Like even yeah. the lightest weight scooters, this is one of them, can be pretty heavy. And so getting a chance to pick them up and see what yeah. it's going to be like to live with, that's a big deal. It's funny, sometimes I'll tell people online too, if they want to really get a good idea of it, you know, you can fill something up like a bin or something with yeah. 80 pounds, but it's still not the same as picking up the scooter that has a certain balance and everything. So it, It's true. Yeah, yeah, some scooters are more awkward than others. Absolutely. Like some 70 pound scooters feel heavy. Some 70 pound scooters feel you know, not so bad. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, and it's all about point. the balance and, and some of them latch, some of them don't. So yeah. it really depends on how someone's going to use a scooter beyond just riding uh, yeah. when they see it in person. So we got to see some of the scooters that were here uh, for service earlier. Let's go have a look at the service center. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the mechanics are working now, actually. Yeah, so right now we just have a service case that came in. Uh, I believe it just needs a new motor. Um, that something happened to it, but uh, Lewis is actually working on it and going to grab the new motor right now. Uh, you can actually see up there, too, that's actually where we keep our parts inventory here. But all of wow. our shops have a uh, repository of parts. Uh, we keep all the tools and uh, necessary materials to uh, fix most things. So yeah. 
And so one of the big questions I have is, there's a huge advantage, you buy a scooter and something goes wrong, you know you, that you guys are here uh, to, to repair things. Now, do you do repairs on, on everything, like things you didn't sell or mainly things that you just that you sold, that you sold so, here? So it's a really common question. It can also be a point of contention sometimes. Yeah. We only pretty much work on the things that we sell. That makes and, sense to me. The reason to it, and I tell everyone, is it's not even an inability or anything like that. It's a lack of parts yes. and then a lack of expertise. And I only like doing stuff that we can guarantee. Yep. I know we can fix all our scooters end to end, front to back. We continually talk about and improve that yeah. aspect of what we do. But when it comes to a scooter that we uh, don't sell or we ne you know, we never touch, that the, the risk is too high to disappoint the customer yeah. more than even you know any uh, burden on ourselves. And that's something that most people don't realize is like almost every scooter uses a unique set of parts or at least any scooter brand uses like a unique set of yep. parts. And if you get something in and all of a sudden you get held up for weeks on end with parts, then that customer is going to get frustrated. Yep. And so if you stick with the brands that you sell, you've got the parts on hand right there, you're going to be able to take care of business and get them back on the road. Exactly. So, and yeah, it's, it's, totally as you're saying, sense. it's a disservice to the customers, it's a disservice to my mechanics as yeah. well. So, you know, we just want to make sure that everybody's uh, well taken care of. and. Like I said, you know, don't sign uh, checks you can't cash. Yeah, so, makes sense. Yeah. Cool. So how long have you had this, the San Francisco location open now? Yeah, so it's actually going on two years now, uh, which I'm really happy about. Uh, and it's been going fairly well. Uh, the community likes having us around and we've been trying more and more to, uh, you know, be a good uh, neighbor to everyone here. Yeah, in fact, I noticed that like, it's kind of hard to even tell there's a scooter shop here. Do you guys, <laughs> uh, is it by appointment only or are you guys open retail hours? How does it work? So there's a split and it's a great question as well. So retail, come in anytime. You can test ride, you can talk about the scooters. That's mm -hmm. not problem service due to the nature of uh, you know time and also metering our workout those mm -hmm. are by appointment and we have that on our Google Maps listing as well as on the website for the shop oh, okay cool yeah. and then um, I guess do you guys sell accessories here as well yeah we do actually uh, we have uh, pretty much the same range of accessories that we sell on the website oh cool so, you know supplies vary sometimes depending on what day of the week you come in particular but uh, we, we certainly do have uh, the variety that you would expect to see cool can we see any of yeah, it on display absolutely. please call right, me let's yeah. go. Yeah, so um, starting off with some of the basic stuff, um, you know, we have the Armadillos, which is a really uh, big fan favorite. You know, flat tires are like the number one ride ender. And it, I've got to do a plug right now because <laughs> this is almost always in at least one of the tires yeah. on my car. This is scooter ceiling, <laughs> but we have it around and when I get into trouble, I reach for it. I put in some slime recently because I didn't have it and I swear this is like not planned uh, conversation, but yeah. I put the slime in and it balled up. Have you heard of that? Yeah, absolutely. And every time I get on the freeway, every time I get on the freeway on a cold morning, yeah, 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 yeah. My car is like, <laughs> feels horrible, like the dump yeah. truck. I never had that problem with armadillos. Fair enough, yeah. It always works. Um, I love this stuff. I keep it at home. Um, highly recommended. Yeah, and I will say, on uh, adding to that, the guy who makes it, I mean, he takes Corey's a, the he, bomb. Corey's the bomb. He, he really <laughs> takes a lot of uh, care and effort to make sure the formulation's good and it's going to yeah. work properly. And it's never let me down either when I, actually when I use it. it. Makes a little bit of a mess sometimes, but it does what it has to. It's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, you can see some other things, phone holders that we introduced recently. So there's the free hand, uh, we called it, and the free hand light. Uh, what is it? Uh, these are uh, phone holders. Oh, nice. And it's uh, two variations. One of them is sort of like the lighter sort of CNC skeleton design that you'd expect. So it's good for like our smaller scooters. So you can see it's that type of design that's like a clamp oh, yeah. that holds the phone, which is pretty cool. And it's also good for smaller phones as well. The full size one is the most uh, versatile. And this one's really cool. I actually like this one because of the release mechanism as well. So it can, wow. hold, it can hold really big phones. That like looks me, really quick to use too. Yeah, me personally, I have the larger iPhone with a case and everything. so. It can accommodate almost, I mean, dang near wow. a tablet. Um, but then when you actually place your phone in there, it automatically clasps it, which is really cool. Uh, and then it has uh, sort of this RAM ball mount type mm -hmm. uh, setup, which is pretty cool with a uh, clamp. You can also attach it if you you know have a particular bolt on your scooter that you would like, but this is probably the my favorite phone mount that we have. So you can attach it, they clamp yeah. it to the handlebars, or you can bolt it straight on. Absolutely, yeah. Nice. It's pretty, uh, pretty good in that manner. And then from what you are telling me earlier, it sounds like you're going to be expanding the accessories available here. And we're going to get our hands on a bunch of them over at uh, Electric Scooter Guide. And we'll go through some of the accessories that you can get from Fluid. Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, be expanding to have more helmets, uh, have more lights, and all sorts of stuff like that uh, here that should, people should enjoy. I used to own a motorcycle shop here yeah. in town. And I always like it was so intrigued by the, you know, the folks that came through the doors and how they use their bikes. How do you think scooter riders in San Francisco use their scooters the most? Yeah, well, I'm sure it's just as variable as the people you met at your motorcycle yeah. shop. Um, it can range from uh, you know kind of what you would expect like working professionals that uh, want to find a different way to commute to work mm -hmm. or trying to save on costs add some more versatility to their you know routine mm -hmm. I've seen students who are simply just using it to get around campus and in conjunction with the uh, public transportation that's available and then of course uh, the biggest segment which is recreational use uh, mm -hmm. it'd be off-road riding yeah. uh, riding in the park um, that's where you probably see the biggest variety of what people do with it and also what scooters they want sometimes getting multiple scooters for the purpose what scooters are the most popular at fluid free ride San Francisco hey that's a great question you know, I've actually been away from 
for a while. Why don't we ask Sam? She knows right. best. Cool. Hey, uh, we were wondering, uh, what's the most popular scooters that uh, people actually generally like here in the city? Well, it seems like the the Kalimas are very popular here, and um, I haven't met a dissatisfied Kalima owner. The Horizon on the lower kind of price range is also very popular. It's durable. It won't get up every hill in San Francisco, but it'll get up pretty much most of the hills. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to kick, you know, you might you might cheat it a little bit. But um, otherwise, you know, uh, Mantis is popular. It's a lot of smaller, lighter stuff mm -hmm. for the most part. So I heard a rumor you guys have a limited time deal going on with a special warranty. What, what's going on with that? Yeah, so specifically here in San Francisco, mm. um, we our, our refurbished scooters, which is another segment that we sell beyond brand new scooters here, mm -hmm. uh, have a two month warranty. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've actually been offering uh, lately a 10-month extension to that to bring it to the same warranty that we have on uh, our new models. Uh, and that'll be for a limited time. Uh, we don't have a specific end date yet, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, just for our new customers here and kind of to breed some more uh, trust with the community, uh, we've been mm -hmm. doing that uh, alongside our refurb. So great deal and a great warranty to go with it. So I understand there's a special limited time deal coming up on uh, with a longer warranty on the new scooters. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're running a promotion uh, fairly soon uh, that where we'll have a two year total warranty. So. Uh, where you usually have to have that one year extension and buy it as an option, uh, we'll include it with the purchase of a, a new scooter. Do you know if that's for all locations or just this one? Uh, so it's actually more probably an online promotion um, ah, okay. than it is. Yeah, yeah, we have a slightly different uh, warranty structure um, for our shops. Uh, naturally, of course, if you buy a brand new scooter, it's a one year warranty, but I, th I believe that's online only. It's great to see retail stores for electric scooters taking off because, you know, it's great to know if you get one that if something goes wrong, you can take it somewhere to get it fixed. And nothing beats getting your hands on one before you buy it. But if you don't live in New York, Miami, or San Francisco, the next best thing, watch more reviews on ESG and over at the new Rider Guide channel. And by the way, there is a 95% chance you are not subscribed over at Rider Guide. There's only 1,300 subscribers over there. So get subscribed there and of course here at ESG as well because every week we're testing the latest electric scooters. I'm Paul for Electric Scooter Guide. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet.